Hi YouTube, I've got these couple of axolotls that I've had for quite a long time now um, but I thought I would show you because um, they're usually kept in separate enclosures um, and these are two males but I wasn't sure at first because uh, I did breed them a long time ago and I couldn't remember if um, you know males were different looking to females in any way so these guys you can see they've both got these um, really swollen cloacal regions so just at the base of the tail there um, where it's all swollen up um, so usually this is the case with most kind of newts and salamanders the male will have a swollen uh, cloacal region and the female it will look kind of similar but really really quite small um, and so yeah so I wasn't sure and I thought because I started seeing this kind of mating behavior because they're actually kept in separate enclosures and because it's been raining tonight I wasn't sure if maybe the um, you know the the actual air pressure or something had changed and it had induced this kind of breeding response because their cloacal region is swollen much more uh, than it is even normally uh, and I just thought uh, I'm going to put them in together and see what happens uh, so that's what I did put them in and I started filming and um, you can see actually I was a bit worried that if they were two males they would instantly start fighting but um, you can see they're not they're just kind of interested in each other and just kind of you know nosing each other and having a good sort of look around so I thought I'd put this video up just for anybody else who keeps axolotls um, just in case you wanted to see what the response is like with two males that are clearly sort of in breeding condition um, looking to mate and what happens if you put them in together and it doesn't seem like they fight you know well these two aren't anyway they're just kind of uh, interested in each other um, which is quite that's quite interesting to me really because I was thinking they would probably fight uh, like I said, I wasn't sure if I had two males or a male or a female. So the reason I put them in together initially um, was because I was hoping I had a pair and I was putting them together and hoping they might uh, they might actually breed. Um, and, you know, since then I've, I've Googled it and double-checked and it's definitely the case that um, the ones with much swollen, more swollen cloacas like these two uh, are males. Um, so it is making me feel slightly sorry for them, although I had you know bought them originally just to have them as display animals um so i could have um one of the natural you know dark color form and uh one albino form just to show the difference really and yeah i'd always planned just to keep them separately uh, because when i bred them in the past you know you end up with quite a lot of little um you know larvae that you've got to rear up and i didn't think i could really be bothered at the moment but having said that after seeing this kind of response from them where they're clearly um, you know quite interested I thought it would be quite nice actually to maybe get a couple of females in so I might try and buy like a normal dark you know color form of a female you know get a female version and a female version of the albino form and then I can make up two pairs uh, and see what happens um, because they are such an interesting species um, and if you've never seen them before, I mean, you probably they're they're famously kept in laboratories and things and science labs. Uh, you know, my teacher used to have them in his classroom when I was doing my GCSEs, and they are um, they're just so easy to keep that they're the sort of perfect laboratory animal. Uh, and also, obviously, they're quite interesting because they are like the neotenous form. Uh, of the Mexican salamander so um, their scientific name is Ambostoma mexicanum so yeah clearly from Mexico and yeah this this neoteny stage is obviously really quite interesting because um, like even in the wild this is what they look like as larvae and this is what actually a lot of newt and salamander larvae look like you know with the gills typical kind of gills uh, and this typical kind of aquatic look where their tail is completely um, dorsolaterally flattened so that they can kind of swim more easily. And then what happens though with a lot of newts and salamanders obviously is after they've been through their larval stage, the tail, um, like the thin part of the tail, absorbs uh, and you just get a more rounded uh, kind of terrestrial tail ready for them walking on land. Um, 
and also you know much like a tadpole with gills the the gills get absorbed into the head uh, and the skin kind of toughens up so it's not a, a kind of delicate uh, soft kind of aquatic skin it becomes more of a, a hard uh, kind of terrestrial skin and then obviously they they leave the water like most amphibians do uh, and then they most amphibians will then just return obviously to for breeding purposes to lay eggs and stuff in the water um, but these guys yeah in Mexico they um, they just live in their ponds the whole time I think very rarely uh, one will leave, uh, usually if the conditions are right, like if the water level drops really slowly, I think it is. Um, it is said that you can induce them to um, to actually turn into the salamander form, uh, like in laboratories, maybe using iodine or something. I don't know if that's a myth or not, so don't. I wouldn't try it, just in case. But... Um, yeah, they said there there are some ways of inducing them to to yeah metamorphose into a salamander, but it's not their kind of natural state. The natural state is to stay in this uh, miotinous um, form. So yeah, very interesting from that respect. Uh, another interesting thing is they've been so widely kind of kept in captivity. You know, they're bred like all the time. They they're really easy to breed. Um, and in the wild they're actually really really endangered now like there's not many left out in the wild um i think they only survive in like one or two lakes in mexico uh and yeah just just really rare so that's a bit of a worry um but at least i suppose they'll live on in captivity but it's just i think uh, they're desperately trying to kind of you know breed the wild type ones uh, in captivity a bit so they can re-release them uh, into the lakes where they actually come from but they're such a fascinating species like I really love them and the albino form as well is like a really kind of pretty animal with the, the bright red gills there are different forms as well I think there's like a, a sort of a pied color variant and there's um, there's one that's more of a sort of a, a yellowy uh, golden kind of color uh, yeah quite a few different color types um, and I think yeah when you breed them like if if I had a normal color one and an albino one if I bred them together you probably find that you'd end up with um, some babies that were you know a bit of both so you'd have some normal ones and some albino ones and yeah that's pretty cool as well so these guys in captivity they just eat um, like worms that kind of thing uh, I even give these guys um, mealworms and they seem to take those all right um, and crickets as well dusted with like Nutribar vitamin powder they'll take that and yeah you can give them like pond weed and things like that or you can just keep them in clear water like this I just use spring water you can't use tap water because that will kill them Okay, I'm just going to leave you with an image of them with a tail sort of flicked around. Um, in the wild, like newts, they do this thing where the female will kind of waft her scent into the water and then the male will pick that up and it will induce them to breed. But that's not what they're doing here. Anyway, check out my other videos if you want to see more of my animals um, and hit subscribe and I'll catch you in the next video.